And now I get to present our next speaker, which is Warren Meyer. He will be presenting on the Yarberry Peninsula Campground, a success story. Yeah, actually, I expanded it to two different ones. Um, Warren Meyer, President, Recreation Resource Management. Nobody I'll, let, I'll let you do your own um, introduction. Oh, I was gonna, I was going to talk you up and everything. Oh, no, my but... biography I said was terrible. So oh. I just, I just, I just, I, we got it. We'll let you do it then. I apologize. I, I hope I don't want to get in trouble with the union for taking your job. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the uh, w President of Recreation Resource Management, everybody just calls us RRM, so I'll just use that. We are a concessionaire. We've been around for 20 or 30 years. The Forest Service is our mother uh, partner, but we've also um, worked with many other agencies, state parks agencies, uh, various other federal agencies, and a little different from the concessions you might know of in the national parks where uh, concessionaires run large visitor services within a park operated by government agency employees, we actually operate the entire facility, though they're much smaller campgrounds and small day use areas, but we will operate them in a way that we pay all the expenses, the insurance, ban the gatehouse, and there's actually not a government employee usually with a duty station in the park. So we've kind of taken over the operation turnkey, but sort of not, you know, it, certainly in partnership because we do a lot with the agency and setting standards and stuff. Normally I would be here in past years and telling you about all the great things that such a model could do for your agency and how you could save all kinds of money and headaches. And if you still want to have that conversation, I would be happy to do that. But today I'm going to talk about something a little different. I'm going to talk about that number. And that number is one estimate, I've seen many of them, of the total federal and state public recreation deferred maintenance accounts in parks. Over 114 billion of maintenance that folks have fallen down on and will really need, is, is necessary to catch us up to where we should be in the parks. And that's, and, and I hate to tell you this, um, Derek is working his buns off on this, but I will tell you that this number is not going to get funded anytime soon. If we're lucky, we will get enough funding in public recreation such that this number does not grow. But I don't see anybody stepping up to write a $114 billion check from any government agency. So there's got to be a different solution, and I'm here talking about a public-private partnership to bring private capital to fixing a part of this problem. And here is an example. I'm working with the TVA. I have nothing but good things to say about the Tennessee Valley Authority. If you don't know, it's a quasi-government electricity agency, one of uh, FDR's alphabet soup that set up, built dams all over Alabama and Tennessee. Uh, they have big lakes. They produce a lot of power. And that's their core business is power production. But in creating these lakes, they obviously set up a lot of recreation. And they're required to maintain it because anybody that's done a FERC license recently on a dam knows that you can't get the FERC license process without having public recreation being a part of the services you provide. But they really need to focus on other things. The other problem they have is that they really made some mistakes in their first round of concessionaring. I think a lot of agencies did. I think a lot of concessionaires back in the day didn't know what we were doing, but they just sort of let out these campgrounds on land leases. And basically people ended up doing whatever they wanted with this land. At Honeycomb Campground in northern Alabama on Lake Gunnersville, uh, basically somebody took it over and they, sub, they basically subdivided it into little spaces and sold the spaces to people. And so you have issues like this. This is as we are starting to kick everybody out, but people dug in, they built, uh, this is one guy built his own private dock out of beer kegs with a lock on there so that nobody else could get in. And you can see the sort of nature of it. You can, uh, the Romex situation on the ground, uh, people, when a new person moved in, they would run Romex to their trailer and they would find the nearest piece of Romex on the ground and they'd just splice into it. And so the place was a safety nightmare. Not only it didn't look nice, and I'm showing you these pictures of the trash, which are the most dramatic in this beautiful situation. But the thing that was really expensive, it only took, well, only took, only took months to get all the trash out of there. But what really was, all the site definition was gone. The sites are gone. The, elect the utilities were all shot and haven't been maintained. And so basically, we were back to something that's, am I pushing the wrong button? Uh, something that's a little worse than a bare piece of land. And the TVA didn't have the time or resources or focus to really do anything about it. Now, Yarberry was a slightly different situation. When I went out to visit Yarberry to think about bidding on it, um, 
this is what I ran into. Now, this is an artist's conception because I didn't actually take a picture, but I got met by a squatter family who started yelling incomprehensible things at me while waving a shotgun at me. And I don't know what they were saying, but they saw the shotgun and I bolted. And I actually bid on this completely blind, never even saw the peninsula. But had I seen it, I would have seen, I, again, I'm sorry, my employees at the time when they took before pictures, um, I hadn't yet taught them not to take iPhone pictures vertically. I, I, those of us that are over 22 have problems with some of these things. And so, but, but we're actually on a beautiful peninsula, but you wouldn't know it because not only is there, has all, again, like Honeycomb, has all the development, the roads, everything fallen apart, but nobody's maintained any of the, the low brushy scrubby stuff. You can't even see the lake. So that's the situation we walked into. Um, the contract structure was as follows. The, the TVA doesn't really have the park service's ability to sort of take investment and have people guaranteed a return on that investment, or, or at least a return of the investment at the end of their at the end of their contract. So what they had to do is the TVA had to give me a 30-year term because I'm not taking this stuff with me. It's becoming their property. So they had to give me a long enough term that I could. Um, uh, uh, get a return from this, but in return I had a minimum investment. I couldn't just take this over and, for 30 years and choose not to invest. I had a 750,000 minimum investment in Honeycomb and 300,000 minimum at Yarbury. We're way over that. We're over a million for both. Uh, but that made the TVA feel better. They weren't going to get in the previous situation where they let out the campground and nothing was done with it. Um, all improvements become the property of the TVA after five years. That's a kind of a niche problem that those of us whose name don't rhyme with Aramark have, that we have to sort of work out a cash flow it, and banks will not lend to me unless they can put a lien on whatever I have built, like the building. Well, public agencies aren't really excited about Bank of America having a lien on a piece of public lands. It just does not work. So what I have become is the king of modular buildings. We have built almost any structure you can imagine out of modular buildings. Banks will lend to me on a modular uh, building loan as long as I can still pull it away in the first three to five years of the loan. And so once I'm paid off my lease, it becomes the property of the TVA and everybody is happy. Um, there's an early cancellation clause such that, you know, obviously if I put millions of dollars in, they can't cancel it after two or three years without giving me some sort of compensation. And they've learned their lesson. Like every other agency, we can't put two boards together without their approval. So this is not us willy-nilly building a McDonald's or anything we want to in front of Old Faithful. This is us building out a plan that's satisfactory to both us and the agency. Um, and this is the types of things we did. And then I'll show you pictures. Uh, we had to start by just clearing brush and trash and drainage issues. We had to pave and redefine sites. We brought in uh, thousands and thousands of tons of gravel. Um, a big part of it is these things were sort of these, uh, just the basics of what we already do as a concessionaire, rules enforcement, on-site staffing, housekeeping. You can't park on the grass. You can't, you know, you can't leave litter around. You can't build your own dock. All those things had to be in for you. can't, you know, once you come here to camp for the weekend, you can't start building a deck. Um, we, we added electric and water at all the campsites. So it's really almost in the southeast, almost a requirement to get anybody to show up. We added a gatehouse, we added store laundry, added cabins, all of which are modular. Um, originally, we just placed RVs as a substitute of cabins on the sites, but now we have cabins. And we added whole new camping loops where we are allowed to or really encouraged to and put bathrooms in the middle of those loops. And by the way, we did this all in social... And by the way, we did this all on social media. This did not take a big marketing campaign. The word got around the community. The community was thrilled that this was going on. Um, I mean, we get put on the front page of the paper and feted by the mayor all the time because these are both hugely important assets to the community that we've redeveloped. So this is the um, honeycomb store and building, uh, 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 camp store and uh, shower building and laundry building. And you can see we kind of tried to put multi-modular buildings together so that you couldn't really tell it was, didn't look too modulary. That's folks enjoying it out on the 4th of July. Um, this is the uh, day use area. Um, now being enjoyed, and and this is we rebuilt all new docks. We actually ended up eventually electrifying the docks because everybody wants to plug in and charge their trolling motors, and then we put in sites and the place. Obviously, the place looks a lot better. We put in the roads, put in the sites, uh, redid the landscaping, and uh, we took all these when nobody was there to block the view. But I will tell you, we certainly have uh, visitors, and so I have a couple of visitor pictures here. 
And you can see that it's, it's, it's an enormous improvement and it's been a big success story there. Um, and this is one of the cabins we're just putting in, so it hasn't even been fleshed out. But we actually buy these out of the factory. Uh, really good deal. They come all, uh, have kitchens and, and bunks and things like that. So that's become a terrific amenity. Uh, I really am a big believer, by the way, in cabins. We did this, I've done this presentation on cabins over in California. We did a California State Parks Initiative, really looking at cabins as a way to get over people's initial fear of camping who have never tried it, get them out into nature, and then maybe use that as sort of the gateway drug to more um, elaborate, you know, in primitive forms of camping. And here's Yarberry. You can see that the, uh, the Hatfields and the McCoys are gone. Um, we built a whole new loop with a nice bathroom and, and made some real investments. You're going to see Yarberry in a second in a different way. So I will, am I getting ahead of my, oh, I will save that to myself. But there's the end of Peninsula, which was completely scrubby and undeveloped and and that's just, there's some fabulous campsites there that people now battle over. So now we have a public recreation area that, that the people love. It supports the local community um, and gets people outside instead of using it for a, whatever it was used before. I'm having trouble here. Uh, this just gives you an idea of the uptake. I apologize. I know that in the public recreation world, y'all like to use visitor counts, uh, us private guys like revenue. And so, uh, but, but they're, I, they're obviously correlated. But you can see Yarberry started later than Honeycomb, but you see they're on the same path. That Honeycomb, by the way, only has 119 sites, and it'll do $800,000 this year. That's, for those that have campground experience, that is a lot of income for a single 100-plus site uh, campground. And it, so it's full all the time. It's incredibly popular. If we could grow it, or if we were allowed to grow it, unfortunately we're not, but the master plan, if we were allowed to grow it, we would definitely do so. And then I'll end, if this actually will go, with, um, so this is Yarberry. Unfortunately, um, we, we've been doing drone videos as a way, people love these things. They get tons of views on YouTube. Yarberry was actually done before the landscaping in, came in. So this was done last fall when we finished the work um, on the new loop. And uh, so we'll have to do a new one when the landscaping comes in to look prettier. But, but, but this is the kind of thing that we were able to do in partnership with the TVA. They have these great properties that, that were not getting used because they were falling apart. The public didn't have the money to keep them up. And privately, we were able to bring the capital, form a partnership, and reopen these as great facilities for, for recreation facilities for the public. Thanks.